Hey guys, Spina Dude here and welcome back to another video. Today guys, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Jurassic World Mattel Rorivores Baryonyx. So let's get this one out of its packaging. Alrighty guys, so here is the brand new Jurassic World Mattel Rorivores Baryonyx out of its packaging. And why don't we go through our same little routine and take a look at the packaging first before we take a look at the Baryonyx itself. Alright, so the Rorivores packaging from Mattel is basically just a larger version of the Battle Damage packaging. We took a look at the Battle Damage Blue on the channel, so you can see on that review that this is basically just a larger version of that packaging. It's a little bit wider as well. But again, I absolutely love this packaging. It really speaks Jurassic Park, but it also has a very nice, more modern Jurassic World feeling to it as well. They're going with the whole shipping crate idea that they're shipping the animals off of is Lanublar from Mount Saibo, which you can see exploding in the background there. With that lovely jungle background, I absolutely love that. You can see the Jurassic World logo, Owen in blue there. It says Rorivores Baryonyx, and then it shows the Baryonyx snapping its jaws in the bottom right. And then on the back of the packaging, you can see it just has the Jurassic World logo. It says Baryonyx, get the Jurassic Facts app. And then it shows a diagram of the Baryonyx with its action feature there. And it says push button for sound and chopping action. And then on the bottom left, you can see the other three Rorivores, which are available in the first wave of figurines from Mattel. And those are the Allosaurus, the Metriacanthosaurus, and the Triceratops. So that's about it for the packaging, guys. So why don't we jump in and take a look at the Baryonyx itself. Alrighty, guys. So here is the brand new Jurassic World Mattel Rorivores Baryonyx. And for first impressions, can I just say that the sculpt work on this figure alone is worth the price. Without articulation or without the action feature, this would still be worth your money in my opinion. This looks absolutely gorgeous, all of the work that they put into this. And this does look a tad bit different from the Baryonyx we've seen in the trailers. And the same goes for the Carnotaurus toy that Mattel has released. I think it's just uh, that the designs of the animals have gone under some changes. Um, during when the toys were already in production, so they couldn't make them quite up to date with what they look like in the film currently. But why don't we quickly go over the articulation on this figure, and the articulation is mainly just in the limbs. Now on the legs, they can move forward and back, and they have a place where they sort of lock into place there for stability, which I think is a great thing to have, because if you just had the regular rotating joints, over time when a kid is playing with it especially, um, it will probably droop because the joints are getting looser over time. But Mattel has found a fix for that where the joints lock into place in a certain position on the legs, which I think is great. Also, the legs also pivot in and out like this, which I think is a great addition. It helps for stability with certain poses, and it can also add some different sort of looks to the figure depending on the situation it's in. The forelimbs also move forward and back like so, and they have a joint so they can pivot outward like that. And you can see that really adds a cool, almost menacing look to the Baryonyx. Like it's sizing up its prey. I think that's a great addition to have that extra hinge in the shoulder there. And you can close the jaw if you'd like, but it does snap open, unfortunately. I would have liked it if they engineered this toy a little bit better so that you could move the jaw independently. And then when you press the button on the back to activate the chomping feature, um, then it would come into play and perhaps spring open. I'm not sure how they would do that, but I'm sure there is some way they could have. That about does it for the articulation. I would have liked to see maybe a ball joint in the neck or something. I think that would have been great. But I think that would have gotten in the way with the actual action feature because the button is on the back. But I would have preferred actually to have the button on the back of the neck and then have like a ball joint at the base of the neck. I think that would have been great. But anyway, for the action feature, the actual gimmick for this toy, and this goes for all of the Rorivores, all of the carnivores at least, as you press the button and the jaw closes and it plays a random sound effect. I believe there are five or six sound effects that play at random. So I'm just gonna play a few of them for you here. Ah! 
That's a pretty cool one. You get some footsteps in there. Nice little snarl. That's the same one we had a second ago. Now, that's one of my complaints with this figure is that they use the T-Rex roar for that particular sound effect. I do not like that. I would have preferred if they used the Spinosaurus roar from Jurassic Park 3, even though that is reusing the sound from another creature. All right, and I think we've pretty much cycled through all of them there. You can see there's a wide variety and kids are definitely going to love that. But my one problem with this is I don't get why pressing the button closes the mouth instead of opening it. If this is a roarivore, shouldn't you press the button to open the jaw and then have it spring shut and like snap shut? as a bite, I think that would be really cool actually. If the mouth was shut all the time, press the button to open it, it roars, and then let go and it has like this loud snap sound. Like that kind of. So you can snap the jaws together and it can go after its prey. I think that would have been much, much better than having it um, with its mouth stuck open. But I kind of like the look of the Baryonyx with its mouth open all the time, that's just me. But then again, I think the best thing, especially for me, would be to have an individually uh, posable jaw and then just press the button to activate the spring-loaded jaw for the action feature. I'm not sure how they would do that again, but I'm sure there is some way to uh, do it. And perhaps they just ran out of time with engineering this particular action feature and they just had to do with uh, whatever they came up with. But it is still really cool, and this figure is only around $14 at Walmart, and for an electronic figure with this fantastic sculpt and the articulation and everything, I think it's really nice for what you get. So we've taken a look at the articulation and the action feature, why don't we take a closer look at the sculpt quickly. So the sculpt is beautifully done, I mean look at all those individually carved scales into the sculpt. Absolutely gorgeous. The scales don't stand out from a distance, but when you actually have this in hand, you can feel the texture and all the hard work they put into making this sculpt. It looks very, very nice. I really like the dark blue markings on the back. You can see the main body is in tan and the Baryonyx has this dark blue marking. It's like this in the film as well and I'm really happy that they went for uh, that particular color scheme. Other than the typical greens and browns we've seen most of the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World dinosaurs in. On the back you can see this crocodilian pattern of scales. A lot of people don't like that about the Jurassic World Baryonyx, but I actually do. Uh, I like that the animals are sort of uh, genetically modified. It fits with the lore and the story of Jurassic Park and everything because they aren't natural. They're engineered to be theme park attraction monsters and such. And scientists had to fill the DNA gaps to complete the animal sequences uh, with those of other animals that are alive today. So I'd like to imagine that the Baryonyx here uh, had DNA gaps filled with crocodile or alligator DNA, which gave it this row of scoots on its back. And then the particular design that's in the film has a much more crocodilian looking face. So I think that would be something safe to assume is that the Baryonyx in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom has crocodile or alligator DNA in it. But anyway, the front limbs look very nice. This toy actually has its signature heavy claw. As you know, Baryonyx means heavy claw and it has the large thumb claw, as you can see there. The one in the film does not, or the claw is significantly smaller. Um, I'm not sure if they updated it in the film, but at least in one of the first renders that was sort of leaked or shown of the in-film Baryonyx, the claw was not really present there. And of course that could be a specific trait of the organic animal that is missing from the genetic modification process, but it still would have been nice to have Baryonyx's trademark claw in its hands. The legs have very nice toned musculature, and the feet are very nicely done. So you can see there are three claws, each of them are done in a black color there. There is a dew claw on the inside of the foot, which is not painted, and the claws on the hands are actually not painted, but I'm not fussed by that. The tail, which was a separate piece, was actually kind of tough to connect, but that means it is sturdy, which is great to know, and it has a nice little curve in the tail, which I think flows nicely in the sculpt. Now the head on this Baryonyx is beautifully done. I love the design 
of this head for the Jurassic World Baryonyx. And the head looks a little more crocodilian in the film and the eye is actually much larger, but I'm actually not sure which look I like better. I think it would have looked nice if it was sort of a mix of both because I like the crocodilian looking face for the genetically uh, modified baryonyx in the film, but then I like the smaller eye on this sculpted baryonyx here. Also, I am adoring this metallic light blue paint. It really makes that head pop. I like the application of the metallic blue behind the eye as well. I think that just adds so much to the figure and it looks beautiful. The eye is done in a yellow color there, as you can see. The teeth are done in a cream color, and the tongue is done in a fleshy pink color, as well as the roof of the mouth, actually. I didn't notice that until now, but it's all painted in a fleshy pink color. That looks great. Now, the biggest thing I dislike about this sculpt is the way they designed the sound holes for the Baryonyx. Hmm, I do not like that. It sort of looks like the Baryonyx's skin is diseased and it's kind of rotting away. I know that's a gross description, but it's what I think of when I look at that. And I think they could have engineered the sound hole just a little bit better. And you can even see it from the side just a little bit there. Um, I, yeah, I'm just not a fan of the way that looks. And as far as extra posing goes, you can really get this Baryonyx into some neat poses. You can have him sort of bending down on the ground there if you want him to eat something. And look at that, that balances. Hasbro should take notes from this. I mean, it doesn't have huge feet. It just has a good, a very well-designed center of gravity. I mean, look at that. It just stands, it locks into place. And you can even rock it back. It's a little out of frame there, but you get the picture. Not really leaning on its tail, and I'm telling you, it's not leaning on its tail. It's actually standing on its feet. You can feel it when you put it down. And if you really want, you can lay the Baryonyx down on its stomach like that. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but maybe if the Baryonyx gets killed by another one of the Rorivores, you could just have it laying on its stomach. I think it's cool that you have these more obscure options because when kids are playing especially, their minds are always going and coming up with these great scenarios and such. All right, so for a quick measurement on this figure, it is a little bit larger than our trusty flexi ruler here, so I'm gonna say it's about 12 and a half inches long, it looks like, from the tip of the snout to the tip of the tail, which is probably about 32, 33 centimeters. And in terms of the height at the highest point, which is the top of the head there, we are looking at a little under five and a half inches, about five and a quarter inches. And then in terms of the height in centimeters, we are looking at about 13, 13 and a half centimeters. For comparison, I thought I'd bring out the recently reviewed Battle Damage Velociraptor Blue. I think these two scale up to each other appropriately of what we've seen of the Baryonyx in the Fallen Kingdom trailers. And then of course I thought I'd bring out Funko Pop Dr. Ian Malcolm for comparison. Alrighty guys, it's time for my overall rating on this toy, and I think that this brand new Jurassic World Mattel Rorivores Baryonyx deserves 4 stars out of 5. An epic rating. Now, there are two main things that bother me about this toy, but they're very minor things. First of all, I do not like the way the sound holes look on the bottom of this Baryonyx. I just think that looks kind of gross in my opinion and I wish they designed that a little bit different and then I wish that the action feature involved perhaps opening the mouth and having it snap shut instead of closing the mouth and then snapping open to me that would have made more sense personally but the action feature is still great and kids are going to have a blast with this toy also I think the sound effects are great but I wish that those one or two sounds that were mixed in there that had the T-Rex roar would have been changed to perhaps the Spinosaurus roar from Jurassic Park 3, even though it would be reusing another creature. The T-Rex roar is just overused for the recent Jurassic World toys, it seems. And the articulation is great here, but I think I would have liked to have the button for the action feature move to the back of the neck and then have like a ball joint at the base of the neck at least, so it, there's a little bit more posability. But that's just me. I think I'm being a little bit too picky. But what we got here, this is without doubt the best Baryonyx toy that we have gotten from the Jurassic franchise. We did have a couple Baryonyx toys from Jurassic Park and the Lost World Jurassic Park. Um, I did have the Lost World Jurassic Park Baryonyx toy and it did not look like a Baryonyx. This looks more like a Baryonyx and even though it is a genetically modified one, 
it just speaks baryonyx to me personally so i want to say hats off to you at mattel once again Thank you for putting so much hard work and dedication and love into this toy line. We Jurassic fans just really appreciate it and we thank you so much. Well there we go guys, that was today's look at the brand new Jurassic World Mattel Roravores Baryonyx. I think this toy is awesome, it's definitely my favorite out of the Roravores range so far from Mattel. I'm really happy to see that Baryonyx is finally making an appearance in a Jurassic film and I think Mattel did an outstanding job with this toy. So if you guys want to get this toy for yourself, I got this one at my local Walmart and all the Jurassic World Wave 1 toys for Fallen Kingdom from Mattel have been released as of April 16th, 2018 in stores. So anyway guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel. Also leave a comment telling me what you think of this Baryonyx toy. So thank you so much guys for watching and as always, I will see you in my next video. Take care and bye bye